Hello mate and welcome to another exciting episode of Render Review. In this episode we got four awesome submissions. So without further ado, let's jump right into this then. First submission today is from Matthew Ebel, or Ebel, I'm not entirely sure how we pronounce that, but um, here we've got a young lady standing in front of a colourful window with some neon signage in front of it. Nice texturing on the background, the bricks, they look like the scale is pretty much bang on with respect to the size of the young lady. Quite often you'll find when people texture surfaces like this, they may be, maybe they'll go a little bit too big or a little bit too small on the uh, size of the bricks or the wooden planks or whatever. So nice to see that um, some effort has been put in by either Matthew himself or his uh, whoever created the scene that he's using here. There's um, interesting, uh, interestingly enough, I think this isn't a window so much as some kind of grate that's holding the neons in place because otherwise obviously you wouldn't be able to see the bricks in there. So it's some kind of framework that kind of looks a bit like a window. Either way, that's enough talking about bricks. So what we've got is a nice expression here. It's very subtle. Um, it's, it's not quite the blank expression. You can see there's some thought going on there and the way that the light is reflecting off the skin is okay. There's a little bit of a waxy sheen on the skin surface on the chest and the back of the arm a little bit. Um, that's something that I tend to try and avoiding only because it does make the, you can see that it's an artificial image just from that. However, um, I don't think it spoils the image as a whole, but personally I would focus on looking at the areas where the light is reflecting and making sure that the reflection is uh, similar to what it would be on an actual human being's skin um, so that's something to think about uh, overall it's a really nice image I like the composition the rule of thirds is being used here which is is ideal and it's one of those kind of images where it looks maybe like she's outside a nightclub having a think about something that's going on or something like that and I like the feel of the image there, there's certainly uh, an emotion in there which may, sort of piques my interest and makes me wonder what's brought her to this. Um, in terms of posing, it's kind of hard to tell purely from the 30% um, sort of shot that we've got here. It does look like um, the pose is being tweaked to avoid the arm clipping into the breast a little bit, which does give it kind of a... It feels a little bit unnatural just because the elbow is very far away from the body, whereas people, when they tend to touch their face like that they tend to keep the, the elbow quite close but I'm being a little bit nitpicky there if I'm being honest realistically the only thing in this image which I'm not overly keen on is the hair and the hair is what when I first looked at the image the hair is what immediately sort of screamed artificial to me um, it is very difficult to find good hair in that studio simply because they all seem to be a, the hair strands are always too thick and B, they always look like they've got way too much hairspray on and in this case you can see that is um, certainly the case here. You know, this strand of hair that's sticking out on the side here, if I draw along it, um, that's definitely not a natural hair angle. Even if the wind was catching the hair, it wouldn't do that realistically. And then obviously there's a lot of frizz up the top here and out the front. And then again, this bang here is hanging a very unnatural angle from the rest of the head. Now, I appreciate that that may have been done deliberately to pull the hair away from the face. But um, this is one of those situations where I would probably be tempted to use a deformer just to make the hair hang at a more natural angle so that it's going away from the face and then straight down rather than over the shoulder like this because that that's just what leapt out of me is the thing that kind of spoils the image but overall it's really good i would certainly be proud of this if i was matthew so well done on that one my friend keep up the good work and just have a think about those hair manipulations in future awesome next up is this image from sune senoz who has done a um a slightly um sexified image version of 2B and um, she's in some kind of futuristic bikini and lingerie set. This one I have to admit was kind of borderline in terms of whether or not I was going to put it in purely because of the content but yeah erring on the side of safety I think we're just about scraped through on this one. So there are two things that leap out at me initially is first it's very very brightly lit from down below which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's um, It looks like she's standing on top of a building with 
um, some kind of spotlight or you know some kind of Batman illumination light um, pointing up at her. Um, and it doesn't necessarily spoil the image, as I say. It's certainly a different lighting setup that I would use. And then there's been a bit of um, post-production, a bit of dodge and burn done around here, here, and here because it's um, it's a little bit brighter in those areas than than I would have imagined that any light source would be, partially because this area would have probably been in shadow. Um, so there's been a little bit of uh, bloom done there. Perhaps need to um, work on tweaking that moving forward. But overall, not bad. Um, so there's one thing in the background which is I assume some kind of flag it's hard to tell again but it's got this kind of clothy waves that are going on here and then some kind of slogan so I'm going to assume that that's some kind of um, flag that's related to the game from which she is which name has escaped me at the moment even though I own it and have played it near Automata or something like that it looks like she's holding a sword in her other hand as well um, that seems to not be part of the flag. If we look at this, that does appear that it is a second weapon. Um, so yeah, and then obviously it's hard to tell if there's any expression or anything like that purely because uh, she's got a mask over her eyes. Um, there's a bit of a wibbly wobbly thing going on with her chin, where the, the chin strap of her mask is. That might be something that is obviously part of the hat. However, um, that would, when you're doing post-production, I would look at maybe moving, using the liquify tool and moving those things to make them look a little bit more natural because there is some, um, that's kind of weird, you know, it's, uh, that's weird is the only word I want to use for that one. <laughs> Realistically, the only thing that really leaps out at me in this image, which is something that we should always be looking out for, is what's going on here. The sword is in roughly the right place for the hand but the hand is in no way grasping the sword so i would hazard a guess that you applied the sword to the figure before you applied the pose because that is um that is the kind of glaring error in this image as far as i can see uh, overall the you know the image is not bad quality that say the highlights are a little bit bright um but overall really good quality image that's the thing that lets this down is the sword in the hand grip is um, clearly an oversight on behalf of Sune, but otherwise really strong image, my friend. So keep up the good work. Have a think about what you're doing in post-production, a little bit more careful with those highlights and maybe just be a little bit more conscious of your posing when you're setting your shots up. Thanks very much, my friend. Next up is an image from Watchdog79. As we can see, we've got a young lady sitting at a desk doing some, she's got some steampunk kind of uh, binoculars attached to her face and she's doing some kind of repair work on I'm gonna guess some kind of watch down here um, various different implements on the desk that look quite nice and then there's a um, an interesting cutout in the desk which shows us her left thigh and she's wearing some kind of uh, some kind of tartan fabric um, stockings on it's an uh, interesting interesting look so it looks like she's some kind of um, watch watchmaker who's looking at um, repairing robots or something along those lines. As you can see from the things in the background, there's a lot of heads hanging in the background there. So this is some kind of steampunk robot factory. She's making good solid eye contact with the camera, which is something that I always like to see. And she has an expression on her face, which again is something that I'm always keen to see. Um, purely because a lot of people tend to forget to do it and it makes images look a little bit dead. Interesting pose. She's got something in her hand. The, If I'm being completely honest, it's only now I'm looking at the image really closely that I've actually noticed that she has something in her hand. Because her grip is a little bit odd, she's sort of... Uh, it's hard to say. It's, it's, it looks a little bit unnatural if I'm being nitpicky in terms of she has something in her hand but it doesn't look it looks like you've tweaked the hand so that the fingers touch the object but you've sort of not thought about whether or not the grip looks natural so you, you're kind of halfway there but that's, again being very nitpicky overall you know as i said i saw it after looking again but not something that you need to be particularly overwhelmed by um, I don't know if this is part of a visual novel or just a standalone image. If it's part of a visual novel, then the chances are that the viewer is not going to be looking at this image for a particularly long time. Um, cool. So it's an interesting necklace hanging around her neck there, which 
is I'm going to guess not a deforced item only because it seems to be clinging to her chest again. I'm because this is a good image. I'm being very nitpicky about little details. So if I if I do this on your image in render review, it means that I'm I'm happy with the overall kind of image. I'm just looking for little things now. We're we're, we're looking at going on to the next step. Um, you've got the fundamentals down now. We need to work on those attention to detail items. So. The necklace hanging away from the chest when she's sitting slightly forward is a bit of a giveaway. And then the other thing that I would look at is this. She has indeed got her thumb and forefinger touching the, um, oh, it looks like a screwdriver or a soldering iron of some sort. Um, but the actual grip itself still looks a little bit artificial. You know, she's, she's making good contact with it. So you've paid attention there, definitely. But in this instance, the thumb probably wants to be somewhere closer to about here um, rather than where it is there, just purely because otherwise it would be twisted at an unusual angle. So again, being very nitpicky because this is overall, this is a really strong image. Um, I like everything about the image in general. These little minor details are the things that I would change. And then the other thing is, I suspect that there's a slightly cartoony element to whatever this game or the image itself is being applied for, um, because of the skin seems to be very. It, I would I would venture to guess that there's either been a denoiser applied to this, or the texture of the skin is very very flat, purely because it looks like there's been uh, there's no kind of texture on the skin. Again, it depends on the art style of the person doing it. Um, that might be intentional, it might not. I don't want to venture to guess if it were my image, that would be something that I would want to address purely from a authenticity point of view. But overall, really good image, my friend. Thanks very much for the submission. Last image this week is an entry from the Sandman. As we can see, we've got a very kind of borderline-esque image coming here. We've got uh, a young lady sitting on a desert floor with some kind of vehicle behind her. It looks like this is kind of a dune buggy that she's gotten out of. Maybe she's rolled it or something like that. Um, either way, that's what we can see. So let's analyze the image as best we can. First things first, we've got the depth of field in the background is very nice. Sorry, just actually squealed there. So we've got the vehicle and the... I'm guessing that's some kind of... Um, repair toolkit or something next to the vehicle they're nicely bouquet out and the depth of field is consistent across the the desert um to make it your eye a focus your attention on the thing that's important in the scene which is this young lady so firstly expression expression is effective in this case i'm liking the use of it it makes you feel like she's frustrated she's fed up she's peed off whatever's happened maybe her vehicle's run out of fuel or something like that maybe we're in a mad max kind of position so that's good there we've got the contact between the elbow and the knee on both arms is really good it looks very natural it's not just touching tips and it's not completely embedded in so there's there's a good bit of thought gone into that to make it look like they're actually realistic and they're touching so again very effective they're well used attention to detail again the hand touching the head is looking very natural it's not going in too far and it's not not touching so that's good and of course the hair has been ruffled up on that side so that it looks like the hand is actually touching the head so again that's very effective uh, and realistic that's what we were going for here after all gravity is working on the hair the hair is, is tilted in the correct direction whether that's a deforce hair or if it's being posed that way again very effective and very good because it looks like it's dangling naturally over her shoulder and then down the side there like that. The top itself is also hanging very naturally. You can see it's slightly baggy and it's rucked up. One of the tendencies in Genesis 8 and 3 characters for clothing is that it tends to um, cling underneath the breasts or, or in between. Even deforced clothing, you'll see that annoying crease underneath the boob line that's normally kind of around here and around here. But in this case, you can see that hasn't happened. So... Again, that's a really effective use of, um, I'm going to guess, deforce there. Nice use of the dirt texture overlay on the skin as well. It looks like she really is very grubby. And um, in this case, I'd say that's a very effective, very realistic looking uh, use of those textures. Even though there is a slightly, overall, a slightly cartoony kind of, almost borderlands kind of element to this render, um, the realism of the posing and the expression and the attention to detail is very good. 
The only thing that I can notice in this image that would be something that would nag at me is here. This foot here on the, her left foot is hidden from view, so you can't see what's going on there. So it, as far as you're concerned, um, she's got her foot kind of pushed into the sand. On this side, however, um, this, you can see that the sand is clipping on her foot slightly and created this kind of big bump there. Um, it's a fairly, fairly minor issue. It's very much a nitpick in my in my case here. But um, that's really the thing that kind of leapt out at me when I looked at this image um, that sort of made me think artificial. The rest of it, very photorealistic. I would say, you know, you could easily get away with claiming that this was an HDR um, that had been tweaked to make it to make a photograph look like it was fake. But that's the thing that kind of jumps out and grabs at me is, uh, and tells me that this is an artificial image, as well as obviously the way that the shorts kind of stick to the bum. It, but again, there's there's not an awful lot you can do that without using deformers. And um, to be honest, I'm the only reason I've noticed it is because I'm being really nitpicky because that's why you sent me your image. <laughs> you wanted me to find things that are wrong with it. Um, but overall, you know, genuinely really stunning image. I'd be really thrilled with that if I was you, Mr. Sandman. So thank you very much for your submission. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for this episode. I hope you found that entertaining and useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm sure you will. And I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.